welcome to the Elevated United Methodist Church. I'm your pastor, Angel Rosario. We're so glad to have you with us this morning, a beautiful morning that the Lord has created for all of us to be together here and to enjoy this uh, 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 December weather, which is not bad, actually. It could have been worse. I mean, we could have been in those uh, two inches of snow up north, but thank God that we're just having rain so far. So um, thank you all for being here today. Um, before you please bow your hand and let us pray to God to start our service. Lord God, we thank you, Father, for the wonderful and awesome day that you have prepared for us. God, this is one of the most wonderful times of the year in which we can remember that time in which you were born, Jesus. And we celebrate throughout this month, we celebrate that, that, that miracle that happened long, long, long ago. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for accepting the challenge. We're coming from a divine being. For leaving your throne and your place of glory and be born as a human being. Grow up. Perform many miracles. You, you brought hope and love to those that needed hope and love. And you did so many wonderful things. But one of those things, something that lasts forever, and it is to put in your life for us on the cross. And we want to thank you, Jesus, for that. And also, we want to ask you that you forgive us our sins. As many times, Lord, we don't even remember that sacrifice and we sin against you and we ask that you forgive us. And help us, Lord. Help us to walk in a way that it's good in a way, Lord, that it's pleasing to you, Lord. And as we celebrate your name today, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you move in this place supernaturally. May you move in our hearts. May you touch our hearts as we sing the songs to you, Lord. May you receive all the glory and honor, and may we feel your presence in this place. May our ears and our hearts be prepared to hear your voice through the scripture, through the lighting of the candle, through the message of today, Lord. May we have a wonderful experience with you this morning, Father. And as we leave this place, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you give us an encouragement to speak to others about your love and how great and awesome you are, and that your presence it's in this place. Take all the glory and honor, Father. And thank you, Lord, for this great opportunity that you give us to come together as a family of faith, as brothers and sisters, to worship and to give you glory and honor. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pay attention. There's something happening here. God is speaking. Christ is coming. God is with us even now. Would you please stand as you're able? Watch and wait. Christ is coming soon. Look and see. God's creative power is close at hand. God's power is in the next year. Stop and notice. God has a plan to form our lives under. Come, come, everybody worship. 
Isaiah 64, 1-4 Oh, that you would burst forth from the heavens and come down. How the mountains would quake in your presence. As fire causes wood to burn and water to boil, your coming would make nations tremble. Then your enemies would learn the reason for your fame. When you came down long ago, you did awesome deeds beyond our highest expectations, and all the mountains quaked. For since the world began, no ear has heard, no eye has seen, a God like you who works for those who wait for him. The word of the Lord.
What child is this? And this is what we're going to be learning throughout this month. Today, the title for the sermon today is A Divine Human. Something that a lot of people don't understand because it's difficult to understand. And scholars have tried to also study all these things. How come a God can leave his throne? Can, can, can get out of his throne and become a human being? And as a human being, can be fully divine and fully human. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that amazing? Well, how do we prove that? Well, let us read the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1. We're going to read two verses, verses 34 and 35. And the Word of God in the New Living Translation says this. Mary asked the angel, <laughs> but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy. And he will be called the Son of God. And he will be called the Son of God. Long, long, long ago, there ruled in Persia a wise and good king. He loved his people. He loved everyone in his kingdom. And this king wanted to know how the people that he ruled over lived. He wanted to know about all of his hardships and things, but as a king, it was difficult to go to all of them. So oftentimes he disguised himself by dressing in clothes of a working man or sometimes as a beggar. And he went to homes of the poor. No one who he visited thought that he was the king. That was a great idea. One time he visited a very poor man who lived in an underground uh, room. He ate the coarse food of uh, this poor man ate. He spoke cheerful, kind words to him. Then he left. But later on, he returned. Later, he visited the poor man again and disclosed his identity by saying, all this time, it was me, your king. I was with you all this time. The king thought that the man would surely ask for some gift or some money or something, a favor. But he didn't. This very poor man didn't ask the king for anything. Instead, he said, you left your place and your glory to visit me in the dark, dreary place. You ate the coarse food I ate. You brought gladness to my heart. To others, you have given your rich gifts. But to me, you have given yourself. And that is a gift enough for me. <coughs> this was a story shared in sermonillustration.com by Brett Blair. And it resembled exactly what Jesus did as a king. He left his place. He left his glory. He left heaven. As a king, he came and was born of a human form to save us. I remember the first time I found out about my wife being pregnant of my first child. I know some of you may remember that. I remember that, that, that first time. It was an emotional time, and yet it was also very frightening. There was two thoughts that came to mind. The first thought, it was all excitement and, and I was so happy and, and, and I was so excited. I said, oh my God, I'm going to be a father for the first time. How exciting that is. Oh my God, what am I going to do? I'm going to be a father for, for the first time. And then 
The second thought came just like as fast as a lightning. In the same way I said, oh my God, I'm going to be a father for the first time. <laughs> two thoughts, two different emotions. Same thought, two different emotions. I'm going to be a father for the first time. It was a roller coaster of emotions inside of me. Emotion that came to my heart. I was, it, it was very joyful. I was happy. I started right away planning ahead all the things I wanted to do with my kid. I didn't know if it was a boy or a girl. It didn't matter. I said, I'm going to play baseball, basketball. I'm going to move outside. We're going to do all these things. And we're going to enjoy time. Bicycle. The first time he ever be a bicycle. I'm, I'm putting all these things in my mind. But then, a sense of uh, 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 a sense and a weight of responsibility that comes with the news that now I have to care, protect, teach, and provide for this little kid. That it was no longer me, myself, and I. That it was no longer me, my wife, and us. But now, it was me, my wife, and this little creature is going to need food, a place to stay warm, clothes. And as he grows up, I have to teach him, protect him, or her. I didn't know at that time. But that sense of responsibility and, 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 and weight, that weight of responsibility on my shoulders as I was 21 years old. This is incredible. And why did I tell you this? Because all this happened to me that I was going to have my first human child. Somebody just like me. And I, but I can't even begin to imagine what was going through Mary's, Mary's head when the angel appeared to Mary on that night. You see, the Gospel of Luke that we just read, we just read this part, but before that, an angel appeared to Mary out of nowhere. This was a wonderful day, just a normal day. She was doing her normal things. She was engaged to this wonderful man named Joseph. And all of a sudden, this divine figure came to her and showed up to her. And say, how are you doing, favorite woman? How's your day going? She's like, uh, wait. How did you get here? <laughs> Can you imagine that day? Can you imagine that time? Not only that, but can you imagine that this, this angel that appears to her say, you will be pregnant soon. Ah, but Noah, not of your, your, your man Joseph when you marry Noah. You, you'll be about to be pregnant from God. And you will be carrying this child that is divine. And this divine person is going to become a human being. I bet that Mary had all the same feelings and thoughts that I had when I had my first child. And even more. How about, what will people think about me? How come? How am I going to be pregnant before being married? Because at that time, that was a really, really bad thing. Women can be stoned for that. And Joseph, what would Joseph think about me? Would he believe me what I just saw? Would he believe? This and not thinking that this is just a, a story that I was making because I cheated on him. Can you imagine that time? Can you imagine that time? All the questions and emotions and feelings that Mary was feeling when this first child, when this, when, 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 when this being, when this angel came to her and told her all these things. How about all her life? All of her life, she had heard about the Messiah. She had heard about the prophecy. Listen to this. Because this was the first time 
in more than 400 years that a prophecy will, will be fulfilled. God was in silence for more than 400 years. But this, the Jews will listen to the scripture, they will read to the prophecies, and they were waiting for this Messiah. Imagine Mary, ever since she was a little girl, going to church and learning about all this prophecy. We are waiting for the Messiah. There's going to be a man that's going to come and they're going to rule all the world, and, he, and he's going to be the rescuer of Israel. And she's listening to this prophecy because they, they read the scripture, the Torah, they read all the, 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 uh, the laws and, and all the prophecies and the prophecy. They, they had all that. They, they, they were educated in that. Day and night, all the time they will be reading that. So all the Jews were waiting for this Messiah. And she knew the prophecies. And all of a sudden, she didn't know that she was part of that prophecy until that day. That the angels will appear to her. And, and imagine her. This is my first child. But not just any child. I'm going to be carrying the Son of God. The Son of God. The one that gave her life when she was born. Now it's her turn to bring him life. To life on this earth. Can you imagine that? Can you just transport your mind in that time? Jesus, the Son of God. This is, a one, this is one of the most confusing and difficult to understand facts about God. How can Jesus be God and at the same time a human being? Jesus wasn't just any child. Jesus was a human being carrying only 23 out of the 40 seeds human chromosomes. Because he was divine human. Can you imagine that? Can you put your head, you wrap your head around All of us carry 46 chromosomes. 23 from your mom, 23 from your dad. You can't change that. That's how human beings are formed. But Jesus, Jesus only carried 23 from his mom. This is so amazing because this Jesus that we talk about, it was not just a prophet. It was not just a human, uh, a, a human child like every human child. This was God in the flesh. Verse 35 proves these words. Luke chapter 1 verse 35 says, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you so the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. And in that moment, the Holy Spirit, in a few days, the Holy Spirit came upon him. And if we keep reading in the chapter 1 of Luke, we also understand that Elizabeth, Mary's cousin, had a baby the same way. A lot of people don't preach about it. It's in the same way, and in, in, in a similar way, not in the same way, in a similar way, an angel appeared to Elizabeth, but this time Elizabeth and Zechariah had the child. It was not a divine union. But this child is called John the Baptist. But it was a union between Elizabeth and her husband, Zechariah. No, because Zechariah didn't believe he got muted for the whole pregnancy until the child was born and then he was able to speak. Because all of this is all divine and all prepared by God. The key point on Gabriel's exp explanation is that what is about to happen to Mary will be a result of the direct innovation of God. The Holy Spirit is the agent of the virgin birth. Overshadowing is the means of the virgin birth. The Son of God is the result of the virgin birth. The miracle was not a baby 
born from a virgin. That's not the miracle. The miracle was that God himself became flesh to fulfill the long-awaited prophecy by the Messiah. Brothers and sisters, we don't serve any kind of child. What child is this? We don't serve any kind of child. We serve the creator of the world. A God that continued to make miracles. It's still true that nothing it is impossible with God. It is difficult to understand some things that God does. And it is difficult for us to understand with our human mind to understand the things of God because God is so powerful. The prophet Isaiah in chapter 55 verse 80 says, we can't because as far as the heavens are from the earth, that's how far our thoughts are different compared to God's thoughts. And our ways different than God's ways. Because God is it's bigger. God is greater. He can do all these things that we can't even do or even imagine to do. So what child is this? This is Jesus, brothers and sisters. Not just the prophet. He is the Son of God. And on that night that the angel appeared to Mary, the angel told all these things to Mary. There was one thing that Mary needed to do, and it was to accept it. Because how, how, how wonderful and powerful God is, God still needs your permission. God can do many things in your life, but he needs you to allow him to do. Mary had the choice to say, no, I'm not going to do that. Did you know that? Mary had the choice to say, no, not me. Maybe my descendant, the next, in my generation, didn't do that to that next woman, not me. And God would respect that. Because that's who God is. But later on in the chapter, you would read that Mary said, well, let it be done the way you say it. I am here. Do as you will. That was the permission that God needed for her, for him to do this miracle. And God created that miracle, brothers and sisters. And in that moment, Jesus was born. God can do far and more things that you can't imagine in your life. The miracles of God still happening today. That was nothing for the Bible time, that's still today. Amen, Carolyn. She can testify of the miracles of God. I can testify of the miracles of God. It's still happening today. You know why? Because over 2,000 years ago, this little child was born. Because Mary said yes. Because Jesus said yes. Then God performed the miracle. That is true today as it was 2,000 years ago. Miracles still happen. Christmas is all about miracles. And let us remember that. Christmas is all about miracle. Not lights and decorations and trees and gifts. Those things are good and enjoyable. And it's nice to come together and, and with family and, and, and enjoy a nice meal and an apple pie. And if you have any extra, you can give it to me. <laughs> because I love apple pie. That's very nice, but remember, Christmas is all about miracle. And that first miracle happened when this divine human was born. That's the first miracle. Miracles still happen today, brothers and sisters, because of this divine human is still alive. Jesus is not dead. He's still alive. So let us remember that this year. Christmas is all about miracles. And the Jesus that we serve is still alive. And miracles still happening today. So pump up your faith, brothers and sisters. Let's pray for one another. 
Let's help one another, each other, as, as, as we celebrate this time. Let us remember that Jesus is still alive and He's still making miracles. Let us pray for one another for whatever needs we have. If you need strength, if you need a miracle, a health miracle, let us pray to God. You don't even know how, how, how many things have happened through these three years that I've been here. The Hispanic Church and I, we, we pray every Sunday in the chapel. You know that? Well, most of the Sundays. There's some Sundays that we can't. But the Sundays that we can't, we go down there, a group of people, and we pray. We pray for you. We pray for this church. We pray for this community. We pray for the people of uh, that, that other church, the uh, Hispanic church. We, we pray for pastors. We pray for the, the conference. We pray for a lot of people. And there's people that come and say, Pastor, we need prayer for this person that is going through cancer. A co-worker. They didn't even belong to any church, this church or any church. We go, oh, okay, let us pray. And we'll be praying for that person. And then the co-worker comes and says, Pastor, my co-worker went to the hospital and he got tested. And he's cancer free now. And I say, now we pray and we thank God because he heard our prayers. And that's only one out of the many miracles. God still making miracles this year because of that divine human decided to be born as a human being and said, I am going to do all these miracles for you. So let us pray and let us remember Jesus is still alive and he's still making miracles. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, Jesus. We thank you so much for making that first step of looking at all the people on the earth, not just the one that existed 2,000 years ago, but your eye extended far and beyond that time. Your eyes extended until this time and, and farther than now, Lord. And your love extended all that time. Just because you saw us, you love us. And Jesus, you decided to take our place on the cross. And that decision didn't start on the cross. Or a few days before going to the cross. That decision didn't start when you were 30 years old and you started your ministry, Jesus. That decision started when that angel appeared to Mary and said, you will become pregnant of this divine person, which you will become a human being. That decision started there with that miracle. And I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for making that decision. Because today I can enjoy this time and this day. I can enjoy my life being saved, being free from the power of sin. Because you conquered it. You conquered all sin. You're victorious on that, on that cross. And I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for extending your love towards us. Father, and we ask that you extend that love and strength to the family of Larry Reddy, to the family of, to the Reddy family, especially August. Lord, that boy has gone through a lot of things these past few years. We pray that you, your love will be poured on him. And the strength that comes from you, Jesus, we surround him in the entire family, Father. We also pray for the people of Israel and Gaza as they're going through this difficult war, Father. We pray for strength. We pray for peace. 
Jesus, send your peace over Israel. We pray for healing and strength for Anne and Scott and Beth, Greg, and Anna. Strengthen them. We pray for healing and strength for Pat, for Sue, for David Rosario, for Stephen Jones, for Jesse Williams. We pray for healing and strength for Claire and for Alice Halverston. We pray for your protection over our military family, those brothers and sisters who have been activated, Lord. We pray for your protection over them. May you see your Holy Spirit to protect them, to surround them, to help them, especially for Nicholas Bell. We pray, Lord, for him and for the family, for all of his family that stay behind, Lord, not knowing what they're doing and what's going on. We pray for your strength, for your love, for your peace over them. And may soon they be reunited. We pray these in Jesus' name and we thank you, Lord. Amen.
Christ is in our midst, in the breaking of the bread and in the sharing of the cup. Come to the table of joy. Brothers and sisters, this is my convictions and my belief. Even though in the United Methodist Church, we are an open table, which means that everyone is welcome to join us. If your heart feels like you want to participate from the table of the Lord in this communion, you can do so. You don't have to be a member of a church. You don't have to be a member of any church. Why do I really believe this? And it's my conviction. Because on the day that Jesus shared the bread and the wine, He gave it to not 12 disciples, he gave it to 12 sinners. But out of those 12, we know about two. Just about two, what their sin was. One was a traitor, and the other one denied Jesus. And even though Jesus knew exactly what they were going to do, he shared the bread and the wine with them. So who are we? If Jesus is the one to invite us, to enjoy communion, who are we to deny the bread and the wine to anyone? This is why you are more than welcome to come and to participate. Because it was on that night that all these things happened. It was on that night that Judah betrayed Jesus. In fact, the Word of God says that Jesus broke the bread and took the wine and said, Here, eat and go do what you're about to do. In that moment, Jesus knew that Judah was going to betray him. And he said, Before you go and betray him, here, eat bread and drink so you have strength. That's why, brothers and sisters, we can come to Christ, we can come to Jesus at any time. And he will receive us. Now, while I put my glove, on that day in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it in half. And he gave thanks to God for the provision for what they had that time. And then he gave it to the disciple. And he said to them, this is my body which is given for you. So do this in remembrance of me. So after everybody had supper, Jesus took the cup. And after giving thanks to God, he gave it to the disciples saying, this is the new covenant in my blood. Drink it, and as often as you drink it, remember me. So what is the whole point of doing this? Jesus repeated it a couple of times, and he said, remember me. And what it is to remember? To remember that he was born of a virgin Mary. He grew up to be a wonderful man. 30 years old, he started his ministry, healing the sick, giving hope to the hopeless, performing many miracles, making many lives happy. And what it is to remember that at 33 years old, he was accused and charged of being blasphemous. And because of that, he was hung on the cross with no sin. He died. But after three days, he rose again. And now he's seated at the right hand of God. And he's praying for each and every one of us. And through him, we find salvation. What it is to remember all of that. So as you eat this bread and as you drink from this cup, remember what Jesus had done in your life.
Dan and Pat, please. <laughs> Turn. Thank you, Lita.
together the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, and the Marvelous are the gift of God's grace. Let us respond with wonder and delight by offering our very self back to God. With reverence and devotion, let us give generously of our gifts that through our offerings, God promised might be fulfilled.
yourselves. Keep alert. Christ is coming soon. Be ready. Christ is among us now. Go with God's blessing. You may go in peace. Amen. 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 Amen.